Welcome artists to this tutorial in Monet Cafe Studio that I'm calling Stop Painting Bad Trees and learn my seven easy steps for painting beautiful impressionistic trees. Now this is a beginner focused lesson, but I believe it has principles that will be good for artists of every level. I wanted to focus on limited and affordable supplies, so let's get started. I wanted to show you a little behind the scenes of my setup. I just have my pad um, clipped to my board and I have one set of pastels in front of me as I paint. These are Diane Townsend pastels, and the surface I'm using is very affordable. It's called Canson XL Sand Grain. Stay tuned to the end, and I'll show you how I use this pad to create pastel studies and protect them with tracing paper in between the sheets. Now, again, this is very affordable. It has two colors and two sizes, so this is really great for beginner artists or artists of any level who might just want to create some studies. Now, it's not sanded like your typical sanded paper. It's called sand grain, but I find it does allow for a little bit of layering. The pastels, like I showed before, are the Diane Townsend pastels. I love Diane Townsend pastels. She has various sets available on Dick Blick. The set that I'm using is the Landscape A set of 24. And these are not inexpensive pastels, but I promise you they're worth it. Now, if you're brand new to pastel painting, I know some of these products can get expensive. So fortunately, I have an Amazon shop and I have something in my shop called Idea Lists. I have the link to my Amazon shop in every video. And within my Idea List, there's a section called Beginner Basics for Pastel Artist. I've got multiple categories here, but if you check out the one for beginners, I have many of the soft pastel brands that are more affordable, uh, both pastels and and surfaces so you might want to check that out the reference image is from unsplash.com I will have the link to this lovely photo in the description of this video and like the title of this lesson suggests I wanted to focus on tree basics so I just chose a tree that was kind of like your typical tree and I'm also going to focus on creating sky holes so this image was perfect for that now I'm using a pencil just to get a basic sketch. You can't see it very well, so that's why I'm kind of speeding it up. But at the beginning stages of painting a tree, you wanna focus on big shapes. We're basically painting in mass first and then fine tuning things as we go. To begin the large tree mass, I'm choosing a pastel that is a middle value, not too dark, not too light, and I just want to block in the basic shape of this tree, and I will later add my lighter values and my darker values. I'm using the broad side of the pastel stick, and notice that I am turning it to give the same gesture or movement of how some of these masses of leaves are growing. And now I've chosen a fairly dark green. And at this stage, which is still a part of blocking things in, I'm working on establishing the values. And actually value, meaning the lightness or darkness, is more important than color. You notice on the tree, where are the darkest areas in the reference image? Definitely down by that tree trunk and also the right side of the tree. We can tell that the sun is coming from the upper left just based on the highlights of the leaves. So I am just sketching in a gestural feel of some of the trunk shapes and getting in some of those darker values. I also decided to give a little band of dark, perhaps little shrubs or grasses growing up. And I've only thus far used two colors, that green and the ochre color, painting basically just by value. I used my finger just to do a little light blending. I definitely don't want to over blend, but it did just soften things up a bit. And now I'm grabbing a pastel that's a little bit darker. It's almost like a dark brown, but you'll be able to see it's, it's a, just a tad of a value darker. And I'm going in and using it more, not really on the point. Um, I'm kind of turning it a little bit, but I lift up to get an edge so I can create some linear strokes. And I'm using this color also to uh, block in some of those areas where I sh see shadowy areas, where some of those masses of leaves are creating a shadow underneath. And at this point, and really throughout the whole painting process, I don't focus on painting leaves. I'm painting values and shapes. Now, if you're seeing a motion go by the upper right hand of the screen, it is my husband mowing the lawn. I created this painting literally within days of Hurricane Milton hitting our area, and my husband was doing some mowing and yard cleanup while I was painting in my studio. 
And now, yes, I'm finally choosing a green. It's a nice middle value green in the set, which leads me to my next step for creating impressionistic trees. And that is to paint from the inside out is what I call it. It's basically working more from a dark to light method, even though I start out typically with middle values just to block in. When I start establishing other values, I typically think of, think of the inside of this tree. What is within it? Well, it's a tangle of branches and leaves and darker shadowy areas. So the values inside of the tree will be darker. So I lay down those inside values first and gradually add my lighter values, building upon the tree in stages of values, which creates that illusion of depth and mass. Prior to learning this technique, I would approach a painting literally like a paint by number. I would have seen those light areas of the tree and painted it directly on the paper first before establishing the layers of depth and values. Again, painting the tree from the inside out. So now you can see I'm finally adding some of the lighter values on the tree and representing some of those leaves that are catching more of the sunlight, which leads me to my next step, which is don't paint leaves. Notice I've just been making little squiggly marks, just a suggestion or an illusion of leaves. We don't have to focus on all of these little details. And if you like an impressionistic look, that's exactly what you don't wanna do. Now, at the end, I'll talk more about focal point where there may be a few areas you establish with a little more pizzazz, and that's going to give your painting interest and, and drama. And now I need to follow my own advice and continue with the block in and focus on other elements in this painting, like this secondary layer of trees that a little bit in the distance and I'm using such a limited palette here this should really be helpful for beginner artists if you don't have many pastel colors before blocking in other areas I did want to go ahead and establish where my darkest value in this painting would be and it's an area that I want to create some focal interest. When you have a contrast of values, something light next to something dark, or an area in your painting that's dark, whereas there's not a lot of dark in other places, it will draw the viewer's eye to that location. So I got this pastel from the set. I actually believe it's a black, even though I don't use black very often. And I'm just using it in areas to really give some attention to certain parts of the trunk of the tree. And again, establishing some focal point interest and attention. Before blocking in the sky, I'm layering a little bit of that middle value green over the land, the foreground grasses, and giving a highlight of the lighter value green that I'd already used in the tree. I also used it just for a little bit of sunlight catching on the top of the second level of trees. And here you'll see that concept of painting from the inside out in action. Notice I already have some of my darker values established on the right side, but I'm very gently using that middle value green just to gently scumble some directional strokes on top to give the feeling that there are some masses of leaves on the out outside of those shadowy areas. And again, this really develops that illusion of three dimensions. And now finally, I'm blocking in the sky. There are some beautiful blues in this set. This was a great value and a pretty blue for the upper part of the skies, which is a little bit darker. Um, of course, I've got some clouds and I'm painting kind of negatively here. I'm just painting the shape around the clouds and carving into the tree. I'll do a little bit more of that tree carving later. That's what's called painting sky holes. Now, I wanted to choose a color. I noticed down at the lower parts of those clouds, it was a little darker in value. And when you limit yourself to a small set of pastels like I'm doing here, you're forced to choose value over color. This was the value that worked for me. I needed it just a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit warmer and a little, maybe a tad darker than that blue in the sky. And also just for interest, you guys know I love purple. So that lavender really gave that. Now I'm making some directional marks. You'll see me do that more as I work on the foreground. It's to create focal interest. Those lines will pull the viewer from the lower right up towards the tree.
Now I'm going to choose some of my lighter values for the sky and for those clouds. I am choosing this lighter value. It's almost like a lavender blue, like a periwinkle. And I'm just sketching in some areas where I think the sky looks a little lighter, not quite as dark as the upper part of the sky. And I'm just kind of carving a little bit, not getting too carried away. But I want to go ahead and finish blocking in the rest of the painting, which would be this lightest value, which is the shape of this cloud. And I'm just kind of carving um, turning my pastel and blocking in the basic shape of this cloud. Now the term blocking in, it is basically what I've been saying from the beginning. We work large to small and we like to try to get most elements in with values and colors before we get too detailed. So that's why I haven't gotten too awfully carried away with the tree. I got my main elements in there, but I want to go ahead and get the rest of the color and value in. Now I added a little bit of blue to the foreground. Again, that's color echoing. Often what's in the sky will reflect down onto the land. Now this is a little bit of a lighter green. I used it very carefully. I felt like it was almost a little bit too light and uh, later I kind of softened this with my finger a little bit. I didn't want it to feel artificial or too forced but it did add a little bit of sunlight to things. And now I'm choosing one of the lightest pastels in the set. I think there's actually one a little bit lighter than this one. Um, just to get the little silver lining on some of the cloud shapes that are catching just a little bit more of the light. I'm just kind of making little marks that have life and energy, which leads me to step six, which is keep your mark making directional and gestural, and it will create a painting that has movement versus one that is stiff and lifeless. These marks are often quick, enhancing the motion of something like this, sweeping clouds. Now I've switched back to that other uh, lighter value. It's a little bit darker. It's kind of like a, um, a very pretty neutral light blue. And I am using this kind of darker value here because I didn't want to get too much attention or brightness on this right side of the tree. I wanted the viewer to come into the tree with those directional marks in the foreground up to the tree and then be drawn into those really light clouds in the distance. And I actually could have just left it at this stage. It's a, you know, a pretty good little study here, but I wanted to get some sky holes. Now, in this post for my patrons, I'm going to also include a link to this tutorial, Five Steps to Create Believable Sky Holes. This is from a few years ago, but it really breaks down the basics of what sky holes are, when you would use them, and much more. But don't worry, I'm going to give you a little mini lesson on sky holes right after this little commercial break. If you would like to become a patron and get the extra content I'm always talking about, it's only $5 a month. You become part of a beautiful artistic community. I get to see your work. You support this channel. It's a lot of fun. And something brand new I've just started. It's called Buy Me a Coffee. It's a way you can tip creators and it works really great for my channel, Monet Cafe, Buy Me a Coffee. So I don't even have anyone who's done it yet, but if you would like to tip this video, you can click the link in the description of this lesson and give me a little tip. I'd appreciate it. And now let's talk about painting sky holes. This is a fantastic technique for bringing impressionism to your work. As I mentioned, sky holes are a way of painting negatively. I didn't paint my tree around all of the spaces where the sky is showing through. I painted my tree in mass, like I mentioned before, and I'm going to now carve in those negative spaces. Now, one thing about value when we're making sky holes is you don't want to use the lightest value. My clouds behind this tree are white, you can tell, um, from the, the clouds on the sides. But if I I was to use my lightest value like my whites to carve in it would look artificial so as a general rule you want to consider what's behind this tree and in this case it's clouds and then you want to go a value just a little bit darker that's why right here i'm not using the white value that i used for the lightest parts of those clouds i'm using my second lightest value and these little marks are really such an excellent way to bring a little focal point energy to your painting. They really stand out. I think you can probably already see that these little marks are really bringing some energy and life to the painting. Now, I also used some of this purple behind the tree, and that has to do with temperature. Often when things are shadowed, 
like I say so many times, we cool off in the shade, so do colors. So we can often use a cooler color and color temperature when we get to those inner parts of the tree. Now I'm carving some of that blue from the sky down into some of these branches. So I didn't paint the branches into the sky. In other words, I painted the sky into the branches. I hope that's making sense. And I decided to add some of this pretty blue in the distance, almost like it was a mountain range far away. And you can just use your imagination when you're painting. And I'm continuing to add a little bit more of that color echoing, some of the purples and the blues from the sky down into the grasses and keeping those directional strokes. And by the way, I know I have sped up this video only slightly. I wanted to get some content to you. Um, so that's one of the reasons I did that. But but you can always slow it down. If you watch it on YouTube and you look for that little gear icon in the lower right hand side, you click it and you can slow it down. Turn the volume down though because my voice will sound strange. I always say watch it first and then go back and watch it at a slower speed. Now I'm using this other uh, darker green to come in and fine tune some of the more shadowy areas uh, just to add again a little bit of depth, a little bit of focal interest to that um, more shadowed side of the tree and some of those underneath branches. I hope mostly in this lesson you learned that when we're painting trees we're not going in and painting all of the little individual parts of the tree first. We're working big to small in mass first and then to detail and if you like an impressionistic look not even too much detail at that. So I'm still carving a little bit of the clouds into um, the tree. I think you can see those sky holes that have come to life adding a little bit more focal interest to maybe some of those grasses little shrubs growing taller and uh, just giving some uh, final mark making and pizzazz to this painting. Boy did it feel good for me to paint something. You guys know I've been through Hurricane Milton and Helene before that. I had bronchitis. I still have a touch of that. So I was ready to paint something. I hope these easy steps to paint an impressionistic tree was very beneficial. Every so often I love to bring a lesson like this focused on the beginner artist using limited and affordable supplies. And if you haven't done it already, please hit that subscribe button. And here's the final. Stay tuned because I'm going to show you how I preserve these pastel studies right within the pastel pad that I worked on. Here are the Diane Townsend pastels that I used. And again, you don't really have to have a lot of colors. Focus on value over color, but I think, what's that, like 10 pastels. And here's the Canson pad and how I keep my studies protected. I just use tracing paper. This one I created, I think this was with Rembrandt. Both of these, I think, were just with Rembrandt pastels. I was on a trip, actually, when I created these. This was a study that we did for a Patreon homework assignment, and uh, I also did this little landscape study, and I love this quick and easy method to create studies and protect them. Thank you so much for joining me in today's lesson. I hope it blessed you, and it would bless me if you would consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and if you would like extra content or just to support Monet Cafe, consider becoming a patron of mine on my Patreon page. All right, artists, until next time, God bless and happy painting.